fuck. <laughs> I almost feel like I'm not here. Even though I'm not a hundred percent better, I'm a hundred percent gonna always keep it going on, being strong. <laughs> so, don't be surprised if you see me out or you see me working through pain. A lot of times when people are in pain they hold it together like everything is okay because they don't want people to, you know, treat them like they hurt or, you know. So, I do the same thing. I don't like people knowing, but, um, you know, having this podcast allows me to be more transparent with people that watch me and listen to me. And also listen to my music because, you know, you can all also hear the changes with my voice over the years. I know with this last surgery on my neck, my voice isn't 100% to where I want it to be at and where it used to be at. But um, I'm still pushing through. I'm still staying strong. And I'm working it out every day. That's all we can do. So... Without further ado, let's go ahead and get it started. It is prison, jail, felon talk this whole week on the couch. So if you have done any time or if you've never done any time and you're just a felon or if you've been in jail and you would like to share your story, you are more than welcome to come share your story on the couch. So again, without further ado, let's get it popping. <laughs> For the couch chronic, couch chronic, where there ain't no fucking limits, 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 limits. Every Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday from 8 Central Time, you don't never want to miss a couch. Trust me, it ain't no fucking limits. I said none. Let's go drop it. Apologize, you already showed me who you really truly are. I'm 
not even judging you. Just say now what you did. Say you would have to but it's okay. I'm doing great. I get to the fate. I can learn pain. If I cut you off, it's cause you was fake and I won't see you later. If I give up, then it be off for nothing. If I give up, then it be off for nothing. I've been on my time now. I have to prove something. I've been on my time. I did on my time. I said what I said and I know you know what I said. And I promise the power. I stand on my word and I promise you that you know what I said. For nothing. If I give up, then it be all for nothing. My time, my time, my time, my time, my time. I said what I said, and I don't do nothing. That's what I said. I do this every Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday from 8 Central Time. Follow Couch Chronicles No Limits on Spotify, Pandora, THA Couch on Facebook, TikTok, and Vivo. Couch Chronicles dot No Limits on Instagram and my main YouTube Instagram and my dot coms, which is THA, real J A N E L L, and THA Couch dot com. Today, well, this whole week is prison jail felon talk. Like I said before, if you've done any time, or if you've never done any time and you're just a felon, or if you have only been to jail, you are more than welcome to come share your story right here on the couch. You never know what you might say that might resonate with somebody. I'm telling you. The couch is a therapy that you never knew you needed, so you never know what you might get from the couch. It's always good food on the couch, I'm telling you. I love it. If you haven't already done so, make sure that you check on your strong friend. If you fuck with anybody and you love somebody, you make sure that you check on them. It's no reason why you shouldn't check on them. Check on them. Check on your people. Do your wellness check for your people that's in the hospital. Write your people that's locked up. I'm not saying put money on their books. I'm saying write them. Let them know that they're not forgotten. Because it's easy to get on the yard and feel forgotten. Because literally nobody's writing you. So that means you're forgotten. So, shout out to all my peoples that still locked up that are able to even watch the couch. I appreciate that. Um, my twin, he just he just pulled chains. He's in A&R. So, man, free my nigga twin, Jack Black. Everybody know that's my twin. I got his picture back here. Free my twin. I love him. So, you guys... I know that some people, you know, they watch the podcast, they watch Prison Jail Felon Talk, and they're like, why you always got to talk about that? Well, this is a safe space for anyone who is still going through the anxiety attacks from being in prison, who's still going through tra uh, trauma. Um, it's, it's never ending. I don't know if you guys think that just because we're released from prison that we're just automatically all good no some of us are still getting over the fact that we don't even get along with our family anymore because they don't know us we're not that same person that we was before we got locked up and that person allowed any and everyone to gaslight them including family that person allowed any and everyone to do them any old kind of way like i did i i suffered through so much bullshit from my family and went through so much with them that I'm like if y'all let me go I'm not fighting for it but we get out of prison and we think that these relationships with our family is going to be the same when we couldn't even talk to them the way we wanted to talk to them on the phone we couldn't write them the way we wanted to write them when we was writing them because everything is monitored everything is watched everything is analyzed so, how can I be my true self on the phone? My true self be wanting to cry sometimes, but I can't cry in front of all of these inmates. I love you too, Kathy, because they are going to take advantage of me. I don't mean um, sexually, I just mean they, they take advantage of that. Some inmates will literally prey on inmates that come in that's always crying. Or that can't get their shit together, that can't get their... They look for people just like you. And I didn't want to be that one. So I can't sit up on the phone like, 
crying. I can't do all of that. So there's no way that you could have got to know the real me on the phone from prison. Family or not. And a lot of us, we think that, oh, you know, your family's visiting you. Your family visits you almost every week in prison. Do you think that that means that we're going to have a great relationship whenever I get out of prison? No. Because, again, I'm not able to be myself while I'm sitting and have officers staring dead at me. I can't even eat what I want. I got to go to the vending machine and give what they give me. I got to wait on my family to bring quarters to have a little snack that I haven't had in a while. That's not even good for you. <laughs> but I wanted it. Those 20, 25 to 30 minutes. I know. I love you. I don't get on um, Instagram live that often. Um, unless it's um, for like shroom talk, mental health talk, fuck fentanyl. Because for some reason TikTok doesn't like those subjects. But they don't mind prison jail felon talk. But I definitely appreciate you for coming to the YouTube. I love you, Ray Ray. So... But you don't get to be your true self when there's correctional officers staring dead at your, your mouth, trying to figure out what you're saying to your family. Because you can be saying anything. You can be like, yo, throw me that package as soon as you... you they watching you. So regardless if you're doing something good, if you're doing something bad in prison, you, you tend to not be yourself when the feds is watching, when the police is watching. It's hard. I don't want them to see me uh, happy and, and, and vulnerable with my family so they can get on the yard and they can and talk shit. Because they will. They will get on the yard like, yeah, all you got to do is take away her visitations. If they see how happy you are about visit, they are going to punish you some type of way to make sure that they take that visitation away from you because they know that that's, what's ha that's what makes you happy is going to visitation. Get, getting on the phone and talking to your family, talking to your kids. They know that that makes you happy. So if you too happy, if you too excited about something, they are going to fuck it up. They are. Whether they provoke you with their words and make you talk back and then they write you up for talking back. So a visit, yes. Okay, you said, what does a visit look like when you're in prison? If you have a level, which means two to four, you are able to physically touch your family, not for a long time, but you are able to physically, this is why I say they watch you like a hawk, because let you hug your family, and they immediately thinking that you're stuffing something down your bra. So whenever you go, you know, cough and squat, they are going to check you extra. If they're watching you, which I'm telling you, they watching, they fucking watching. But yes, you can hug your family, you can hold their hand, you can have your, your kid, like if you have a child, you can have them in your lap the whole time. Um, that would be appropriate because it's a baby. They wouldn't expect a baby to be passing off no drugs or nothing like that. But if you're a level one, you are literally behind a glass. I'm talking about, oh, oh well, there we go. It says live restriction. Boop. It says live eligibility restriction. Da 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 da. Well, again, certain subjects that I talk about on TikTok are not allowed. I thought this one was flying. I thought it was flying, but it's not. Anyway, so prison jail felon talk will be resumed tomorrow on um, Instagram. I won't be on the, the actual TikTok. So if you're watching TikTok, I'm on different streaming platforms and Spotify, Pandora, Couch Chronicles, No Limits. For some reason, TikTok doesn't allow me to do some of my lives. And these are subjects that need to be talked about. These are like mental health talk. Why can't I talk about mental health talk? Why can't I talk about shroom talk? It's important. <laughs> yes, somebody is reporting me. But it's all good. It's all good. Let's get back to the subject. So visitation. Visitation on the level one is literally behind a glass. You literally can only pick up a phone. Like these, now this will go back to like what you see on TV. When you see them like talking through a phone in a glass with little holes. 
That's exactly how level one is. They want you to feel that you're a level one. They want you to know that you are a level one. Level one, also, you can't even use the phone. And if you sneak and use somebody else's phone, which, again, if they're watching you, then they're going to catch you on the phone using somebody else's stuff. Yeah, they are. Which, this is crazy because I had no idea. This is how I knew they was watching me. Because I ended up on a level one. And I said, you know what? I don't even give a fuck that I'm on a level one. I'm going to make the best out of this. I'm going to pay somebody to use their phone. I'm going to give them my number, um, have them call, and I'm going to use their phone. Do you know that during the middle of my call, after about maybe five or six times of getting away with it, it was like, your call has been shut down for an unauthorized uh, user. I was like, maybe I'm tripping. Can you try to call this number back again? She was like, my number doesn't work anymore. I can't use the phone. So then you got to suffer those consequences of getting somebody's number taken away, which... I did, but we have to do what we have to do to talk to our family, right? Some people sneak in cell phones. Some people use a, a, a cell phone that's snuck in, which, again, if you are not using a cell phone, then you are not able to get to know, to have your parents or your family or your, your kids get to know the real you. They won't get to know the real you until you get out of prison. But who's to say that once you get out of prison and they and you start to, you know, open up and they get to know you, that they like who they meet, that they like who you are now. Because some of your family don't like who you are now to the point that they are trying to make you be the person that you was before you got locked up. I'm not that same little kid. You're not going to gaslight me. And just because you're my parent doesn't mean that you get to disrespect me. I'm an adult now. Just because I wasn't an adult when I got locked up doesn't mean that I'm not an adult now. So, that's why there's always so much conflict because on the yard, it's not about respect your elders. That's not what it's about. It's about 8 to 80, blind, crippled, or crazy. You will get disrespected if you disrespect me. That's what it is. I'm, I kid you not, that's exactly how it is on the yard. They don't give a fuck if you older than them, if you they selly, and you in there cutting up, if you in there whatever to make them feel offended, they don't give a fuck if you older than them. It's going to be a smackdown. They don't give a fuck about fighting an old person on the yard. I'm, I kid you not. Nobody cares. Only you all care because this is society. You're not supposed to do that. They, they teach you that, you know, respect your elders. Don't disrespect your elders. Let them talk how they want to talk because they older than you. But in prison, that don't fly. That does not fly if you disrespect anyone. I don't give a fuck how old you are. They're going to do it. They're going to treat you accordingly, whether they one of those ones to pop off or they one of those ones to beat you up. They're going to do it, and they don't give a fuck. Did you have the ability to video call your family? Now, um, they do now. From what I'm hearing, they um, they do video calls now. But when I was locked up, they didn't have video calls. They actually, um, they had an MP3 player that uh, I, you can now, I think, receive emails on. But back then, again, it didn't have the email. It had the emails on there, but it didn't allow you to get emails. Um, some of this stuff happened whenever I got out. So, I'm... If I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, it's called Securus and Securus because I just downloaded it because I'm trying to talk to my twin, which again, free my twin, Jack Black. But um, I'm trying to talk to my twin and um, I was told that I'm able to face call him, but um, it's a prison line. Now, like I said before, there's no way that you can possibly be your true self on a penitentiary line whether it's FaceTime or anything, because every call is monitored. Everything is monitored. 
And even if you think you're getting away with it, I'm telling you, I got caught. And it wasn't that I, I wasn't broadcasting or nothing. The only person that knew I was making these calls was me, my family, and the girl that was letting me use her number. So, you have to really... If you want to have a real relationship with your family, if you want to have a real relationship with your kids, and for some people this might not happen, this might not have happened. They might have got out and got right back into the gist of things. But a lot of us, we don't get along with our family because they don't know who the fuck we are. They thought they knew us before we got locked up. But you know even more so when you get out that they don't know you. He said, this is like a movie. These guards don't let anything pass. No, they don't. Yeah, that's what's it. Mm-hmm. Everything is monitored. Everything is monitored, Ray Ray. And it's, it's hard to be your true self when you know that you're being watched. It's like being in a zoo. And it's just people are looking at you. And you're not looking at the animals. They're just looking at you and listening to you. And they on your and they waiting on one little slip up so they can be like, oh, level one, uh, misconduct, uh, lock up. They waiting on any moment to do that. Any moment. So even though I I would get visitation, even though I would, I wouldn't really want to talk about what I'm going through. I wanna I wanna hear what y'all doing. So how often do you get to know somebody if you're the only one talking? And even when I would tell them certain things, they obviously didn't listen because they still don't know who I am. And again, a lot of inmates suffer from getting out in their family not knowing who they are, so they have a broken relationship now. There's a lot of broken relationships because of the system. Because of the system. Because we're in here. He said, yeah, it broke my heart. The one time that I had a level one. Oh, no, Faith. Yeah. I had a level one for about a year. And... They gave me a level one, not because of something that I did, but because of something that somebody told them that I did. It wasn't even that they caught me doing anything. It was just that an inmate told them that I did this, and they caught me. They made me stay on level one for a whole entire year because of that. And you want to know what it was? That I was in a relationship. All right, bitch? We could be in relationships in this motherfucker, but it was who I was in a relationship that they didn't agree with. Which I didn't agree with it either. After I got off my medication, I was like, hold on. Whoa. You're ugly. And if me and you are together, it's no longer. It's over. She beat me up. That was cool. I wasn't mad at it. <laughs> but that was not my type. And I was in absolute shock that Anyone that actually knew me allowed me to be with that girl. So, um, but they gave me a level one because I was with her. Even whenever we broke up, I was still a level one. I'm like, bro, y'all gonna have to remove, remove this level one and give me a level because I'm doing everything that I'm supposed to do. And he's like, well, are you still with so-and-so? No, I'm not with so-and-so. And I told you guys after y'all took me off... Well, I made them think that they took me off the medication, but I really was just cheeping my medicine and spitting it out. I was like, but I told y'all after that y'all took me off this medication that I realized that I wasn't seeing clearly and that wasn't my type anyway. I said, y'all are allowing this girl, which they was, they was allowing her to beat me up on the yard. And the only reason why I wouldn't fight her when I first got there is because I had first got there. They told me if I be good for about a year, then I can get out early. And I was believing in that. So I was on heavy medication. When I got off and this girl would not stop fighting me, I would literally, I, I wouldn't run because I'm like, I'm not finna run. We on the yard. If you're going to beat me up, beat me up right here. Boom. And that's what I would do. I would let her beat me up until one day 
I said, you know what? I'm 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 probably not gonna get out with this shit. <laughs> he said, genuinely cur curious if there's racism in the prisons. I got you. Give me one second, let me tell you. But um I said, you know what? I, I don't think I'm gonna get get out in a year. I've been on level one for a whole year. So what they gonna say? Oh, she was doing good, but she was on level one. I said, no. I know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna kill this bitch. Because number one, you made it, you the reason why I'm not gonna be getting out in a year, so you gotta go. So what I did was sharpen up a um, spork, broke off the head of it, and I sharpened it up into a shank. And I proceeded to try to kill this bitch. It took me to lock, but um, what lock is, is 24 seven, which really people say no, it's um, 23 hour lockdown. It's supposed to be 23 hour lockdown, but if they don't fuck with you like that, then you are gonna be in there for 24 hours and take one shower, maybe two showers a week, maybe. When you're in lock, one of the punishments I feel like is the fact that you don't get the shower every day. You don't. I don't know if they changed that now, but they made it to where you can only shower two times a week. And you can't get no shampoo. Or you can get shampoo, but you can't get no conditioner because they think that you're going to masturbate with the conditioner. It's certain products that you can't have in lock because they think sexually. Like, that's y'all thinking like that. None of us is fucking thinking like that. We are literally thinking that we want to wash our goddamn hair because you are literally making us sit in this cell for 23 hours a day and only getting two showers a week. So now you telling me I can't have my conditioner that goes with my shampoo? Bet. Now, to answer your question about is there racism in the prison? Of course there is. I remember there was a time when we first got a um, a black uh, warden. And contrary to what anybody believes, I was there when it happened. And I watched it. And I literally felt like as a black person, I was not going to make it. I said, not only am I black, but I got a mouth on me. And they're not going to just be able to do me like that. They was literally, I'm talking about the white officers. They went as far as every one of them shaved their fucking heads off to make a fucking point that they didn't like the new warden. I'm not kidding. They didn't like the new warden. They didn't like the fact that he was black. And that's just what it was. Rosencrantz was the motherfucking leader of them bitches. I kid you not. Every single one of them officers that was trying to be like him shaved their fucking head off to be just like that stupid motherfucker. I kid you not. And they was going around. I'm not kidding. They, ooh, it gave me chills. Because they, they was torturing black inmates. I remember when they took Rainbow's face and they slid her face all the way down the motherfucking ramp and took her to lock. Her face was, she light-skinned, so her face was black, purple, scratched the fuck up. She wasn't the only one. She was just the only one that I was close to that it had happened to because it was other people that it had happened to, but I wasn't really that close with a lot of the black girls. And y'all know why. Because they was mean to me. They didn't really like me like that. And I'm not lying. If you say I'm lying, then you are one of the ones that has apologized to me since I've been out of prison. But I kid you not, the black girls really didn't fuck with me like that. I, I had a few, I had more than a few black friends, but... I mostly hung out with the white people, the the natives or the, the Mexicans because they said I talk too proper. But y'all hear me all the time. Do I talk too proper? And it's not even that. It's just the fact that y'all talk too ghetto. The fuck? And that's just what it is. And another thing is I wasn't always like on the set. Cuz, blood. I wasn't doing none of that shit. I don't have to do none of that shit because, okay, I caught my case. But that don't mean that I'm a motherfucking blood. That don't mean that I'm a cuz. That don't mean... And, and some of these people really are in these gangs. I just so happen to not be in any gang. And it bothered some people. Because I wouldn't give a fuck what set you from. If, if I like your energy, I'm going to hang out with you. 
Bloods just so happen to treat me the best. <laughs> and that's just what that was. So, if you're just now tuning in, it's the Couch Chronicles where it ain't no fucking limits. I do this every Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday from 8 Central Time. Follow Couch Chronicles No Limits on Spotify, Pandora, THA Couch on Facebook, TikTok, and Bigo. Couch Chronicles dot No Limits on Instagram and my main YouTube Instagram and my dot com, which is THA Real J A N E L L. Now, before we get into a song, I do want to clear this up. When I say the black girls didn't really fuck with me like that, um, the old heads that was black did not treat me like that. No, they old heads. They not into all that mess and all that that bullshit that the young ones was carrying on with. So, all my old heads that's black that still follow me right now, you know I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about them little kids. Uh uh-uh. uh, listen to how she talk. <laughs> like. Okay, listen to how I talk and listen to how you talk and who's really fucking rapping. Let's jump into a song. <laughs> I love you too, baby. <laughs> I appreciate y'all. I'm going to stay on the couch as long as I can. Again, this week is Prison Jail Felon Talk. I love you guys so much for tuning in and for giving me the positive vibes and energy that I need to carry on because when I tell you, there's times when my medicine is like, girl, you better stay in this bed. Girl, what you getting up on? You know your neck, your, your neck, your shoulder, your back, your this, your that hurts. Why are you up? Because I love you guys. And I love your energy. And I appreciate you guys. 
And not only that is like I always tell you guys, the couch is the therapy that you never knew you needed. Not just for you, but for me as well. For me as well. And just like some of you guys need me, I need you too. You know, I lost one of my couch potatoes last weekend and I took it really hard. Anthony Alexander will never be forgotten on this couch. He will always be remembered. He will always be one of my couch potatoes. And as soon as his family is, you know, done grieving and able to hit me up, I got something very special that I want to send them. You know, any and every single one of you guys mean the world to me. Literally mean the world to me. And if I lose you, I lose a piece of me. You know, it's already November and next month is December, meaning next month is Christmas and also meaning it's almost eat eat time. Thanksgiving, eat eat. Whatever. Anyways, it went by so fast it's crazy, but I definitely appreciate everybody that's been supporting the couch throughout this whole time. Twenty twenty five is gonna be bigger and better on the couch. Bigger and better. I am excited about next year. I'm also excited about this Sunday. So if you guys are in the Oklahoma City area, the OKC People's Choice Awards is this Sunday. And we will find out who are the winners. I'm really hoping that I win Favorite Local Podcaster again two times in a row. I'm hoping. So fingers crossed on that. Um, shout out to everybody that voted for me. I appreciate it so much. Again, it's this Sunday, and I have two more seats that's at my table. So if you are in the Oklahoma City area and you would like to come, I have two more seats that's at my table. So just hit me up. I got you. Again, shout out to all my couch potatoes that continuously support the couch. Y'all know this is season three. Next year is season four. Oh, man, this is crazy. I can't. I almost can't believe it, but I love the fact that I have my podcast. Even though it came at a time in my life that was very, very traumatic, I've met so many cool people and made so many great connections, and I'm really thankful for all of you guys. Yes, season four. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm ready for this Sunday. And this Sunday, I get to perform... I'm super excited. This is the 10th annual of the OKC People's Choice Awards, if you guys didn't know. And to be able to perform for the 10th, I'm not going to let them down. I've been practicing every day, every day. Because, again, y'all see, I just had my neck surgery. It's it's not even all the way healed yet. And I'm trying to push myself. But, you know, with my esophagus being moved around like that, you see how my voice, uh, did you hear that a minute ago? Okay, you see how it keeps doing that? But um, it's just, it, it even happens when I sing, and I hate that. But I'm going to get through it. I'm going to push through it. I'm super excited. I'm, it's an honor to be able to perform like this. So I'm honored. Shout out to Shalanda and the Candy Girls. She said Thanksgiving already happened in Canada. Oh, shit. What? What day was it? Fuck. Okay, well, I'm eating. It's let me know so I can celebrate Thanksgiving next year, y'all time. I just want to. That'd be so cool. Now, I know you guys have been. Um, well, some of you guys haven't been keeping up with the Diddy case, but I, I don't feel like he's remorseful for anything that he's done. And I honestly think he that he believes that he's going to get out with nothing happening to him. For him to say that the only bad thing that is um, that he's experiencing while being locked up is the food, nah. Uh-uh. Y'all not doing enough. No, and I'm not promoting violence or anything. But all I'm saying is this. If you would have went to the prison that I'm thinking, 
they would beat your ass every day. It wouldn't just be, oh, the food is terrible. I don't give a fuck. You eat nothing. <clears throat> Kick his food from under him. They would torture that man out here. Yeah. You don't just... And it's not any... Some of these cases aren't alleged. They literally know for a fact that he did this. And some of you guys, guys, are still saying he's innocent. It makes me wonder how or what you would do for your child if they experience these type of things. Some of you guys don't give a fuck. You literally like, man, that's Diddy though. Okay. He sexually abused children, women, men, friends, family, enemies, the fuck? Any type of pedophile, any type of fucking molester, they need to be punished to the full max. I don't give a fuck. I don't care. And that's just what it is. I don't know if you guys uh, even pay attention to Krishan Rock, but she made a statement of, about a week ago that her sister made her eat her pussy when she was younger. Now, her brother just came out and said the whole family is disgusting, that they always do that to them. They've been doing that to them since they was babies, making them suck their dick, Make it, the uncles making the boys suck their dick. The, the brother said that. He said he had to suck all his uncle's dicks. They made him. His sister was trying to make him fuck her. The same sister that Krishan said made her eat her pussy. She tried to stuff his dick inside her pussy. I don't know if you guys be keeping up with this type of stuff. But to me, these sick motherfuckers. And let me tell you something. It's even in the families. I got some sick ass fucking family. And that's some, a subject that some of you guys don't want to talk about. Some of y'all are scared about. But some of y'all family members is in prison right now for being a sick fuck. So it ain't just Diddy. I keep telling y'all, even the Diddy's that's in y'all family. Okay? I had a nasty ass fucking cousin tell me after he raped me. This is the best pussy I ever had. It's a damn shame you my cousin. I'm so glad he's in prison right now. I'm, I'm so glad. I wish him nothing but the worst. You sick fuck. I'm talking about uh, all of us do this. All of y'all do that. Bitch. Sorry, but it really brought back some bad fucking memories for me because I'm just like, they not the only family that has went through that. And there's a lot of us that y'all don't talk about it because we black. And you already don't want to taint the image of black people when black people has been tainted our whole lives. Just being real. Slavery. And then some of them stayed slaves even after slavery was over. Being molested and taken advantage of in our families, to some, it's a norm. It happens. But this is the reason why it needs to be talked about. Because those family members need to be held accountable. Even if they change. I don't give a fuck that they changed. That they different now. You traumatized me as a child by fucking me. You traumatized me as a child by making me fuck you. Any rapist, child molester, I feel like they they need to be held accountable. Period. It's no reason why y'all should get 25 to life for somebody that's selling drugs and 10 to 15 years to somebody that molests another human or rapes another human. 
it, it just shows you that America isn't really for justice for the right thing. They're justice for the show. Yeah. Thank you so much. Actually, one of my couch potatoes painted that for the couch. Her name is Amber DiCascio. Shout out to Amber DiCascio for painting the frog for the couch. All of this art is pretty much from my couch potatoes. Only this one is my own that I did myself, of course. But everything else is from my couch potatoes. I really appreciate you guys. I love, love, love art. I even have drawings over there on this side. But if you are one of those ones that like to draw and you want your art right here, please send it to me. I love it. I will post it. So, um, but again, you know, um, prison jail felon talk. And, and then we literally still have these same family members that come around during Thanksgiving knowing what the fuck they did to you. But everybody act like nothing happened. Nothing. You didn't speak on it. I'm going to tell you guys something that um, a lot of people don't know. But um, when, when um, my wife and I decided to get married and my family didn't show up to the first wedding, we got married twice. When they didn't show up to the actual ceremony, the actual wedding, I knew what it was. For them to be offended that I'm marrying a woman, the love of my life, the one who makes me the happiest in the world, and y'all let my sister marry the man that tried to rape me and also have his fucking kids is mind-boggling to me. It's mind-boggling. And to be honest, mm, ooh. It's really crazy because mm, for some reason, black families always do this. And I'm not saying that white families don't do this either. But especially fucking black families. Like y'all y'all will know something. Y'all will know the truth. And just Huh? They did they could have never did that. What? I raised them. They didn't do that. Excuse me. It's mind boggling. And it's hurtful. And imagine. I couldn't even, mm, Krishan, man, and her brother, and, you know, even her older sister was possible. She was a victim as well. All of them were victims. A lot of us are victims. Silent victims. A lot of us have to watch our rapists be around the family forever. Some of us will have to deal with this for the rest of our lives. I got two nieces. And what's crazy is I went to prison for shooting a man that raped me. Got out on bond about a year later. Only to have to turn myself back in. But the night before I turned myself in, my sister's then boyfriend tried to rape me. I remember sitting in the jail cell. I was in lock, matter of fact. I remember sitting in lock. I remember being on that phone, begging my sister, please, please don't talk to this guy no more. Please, please don't, please, because, because he tried to rape me last night, sissy, please, please. And then, um, about a year later, they got 
Latin area. I'm sorry, y'all. I didn't know that this would make me cry. Some people deserve to be in prison and some people just don't. And um, I hate to be on here crying like this because I promise I did not think that it was going to make me cry. I really thought I was over it. But it just, um, y'all have no idea what it does to the, to the other family members that are the victims. have to deal with the fact that they have so much pain, trauma, and hurt that they, they can barely be the best them to the person that they with. You know? The prisons should be filled up with rapists, child molesters, murderers, not people trying to sell some drugs to feed their goddamn family. They trying to feed their fucking family. Which, okay. If it's a drug that's killing people, like fentanyl, lock they ass up. Fuck it. But if it's something simple, like somebody selling their pain meds or some shit, I don't know. I guess I'm being wrong for thinking like that. He said, don't be sorry for crying. Feel your feelings. And all of what you're feeling is valid. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. I love you. Thank you. I just... Next year, I'm really going to dive in to the trauma behind families hiding their own ditties. Literally, not... Allowing anyone to punish them. Because they're family. I no longer would allow any of my family members to gaslight me. I don't give a fuck who fuck with me and who don't. I don't. And, and if you try to bring up the Bible, the Bible also says parents don't provoke their children, but they still did the fuck. Let them worry about that sin and other sins. Then I'll have to worry about mine. But if we have to be held accountable when we do crimes, how come rapists, child molesters, aren't held accountable? How come we're not allowed to call them out? Because it'll make the family look disgraceful or make people look down at the family. Who gives a fuck about it's a lifetime of trauma that's stuck that'll never go anywhere because y'all like to sweep things under the rug i really would love to do an interview with krishan and her brother even her big sister shit all her family Never let these people get away with it. We hold everybody accountable except for rapists and child molesters and cop kill or uh, people cops that kill people. Y'all hold everybody accountable but them. And then you will, you know, try to hold a rapist accountable, but then you insult the fucking victims by giving them five to six years and shit. The fuck. That's a goddamn insult. But you made me do more time. You, oh, the system is so fucking ass backwards that is physically sickening. Physically. <sighs> you just now tuning in. It's the Couch Chronicles where it ain't no fucking limits. I do this every Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday from 8 Central Time. 
Follow Couch Chronicles No Limits on Spotify, Pandora, THA Couch on Facebook, TikTok, and Vigo. Couch Chronicles dot No Limits on Instagram and my main YouTube Instagram and my dot coms, which is THA, real J A N E L L, and THA Couch dot com. This whole week is prison jail felon talk, so if you've done any time or if you're a felon or if you've only been in jail, you're more than welcome to come share your story. Don't be afraid to share your story just because it's going to embarrass somebody else. Your story is your truth. And that's just what that is. I know I said that a lot tonight. I definitely appreciate everybody for tuning in and bearing with me and my stupid ass tears. I love y'all. I will be back on tomorrow. I'm about to go take my medicine and lay it down. Well, take a shower, take my medicine. Oh, it's past time to eat. I might eat a little snack. To take my meds but if you would like to support the couch it's never mandatory but it's always appreciated you can cash app paypal or chime t-h-a real j-a-n-e-l-l or you can send stars or gifts i definitely appreciate everybody for tuning in tonight again prison jail fell felon, to- felon talk this whole week i love you guys Love you. Spotify, Pandora, thank you so much for tuning in. It's the Couch Chronicles, where it ain't no fucking limits.